like to welcome everybody today to Film 101. Uh, we're changing our format a little bit in that we are going to be sponsored by the Centenary Film Society. And we'll have basically a joint Centenary Film Society, Robinson Film Center, Film 101, where throughout the summer, we are offering up suggestions and comments on some films that you might want to watch while you're hunkering down or catching up on things you haven't seen for a while or maybe never have seen. Uh, today, I'm being joined by Alyssa Fife, who is the president of the Centenary Film Society. And we're looking forward to working together over the next few weeks where we pick films and comment on them. And hopefully we'll have a lot of fun and uh, share our thoughts and ideas and feelings about some films. We've been doing um, a series on the Fantastic at the Robinson uh, Film Center. Uh, and now that Centenary comes in, we'll continue with this for a while. But Alyssa, we're open to doing whatever we want to this summer, something that will be mm -hmm. fun and exciting and uh, really great to have you here. And I think you know a lot more about film than I do, Alyssa. Uh, <laughs> so I really value all of your insights and uh, looking forward to working with you on this. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't say I know more than you do, but... I'm getting there. I'm trying. Uh, hey, you're doing a great <laughs> job. So today, the film that Alyssa and I wanted to talk about is the film Her, directed by Spike Jones. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa, I think it's 2013. Uh, yeah, I can check. So I think it is, uh, what, seven years old, roughly now? Somewhere it's, around there. Yeah, it's on the mm -hmm. theme of artificial intelligence. Uh, and as I looked at the film again yesterday, Alyssa, it, it struck me that in some ways it's very, very relevant because the lead character mm -hmm. played by Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Theodore or Theo, <laughs> is suffering from maybe what a lot of people are suffering from right now mm -hmm. uh, during the quarantine, which is a kind of melancholia, a, a kind mm -hmm. of melancholy disposition. And uh, and so the question is, um, what ultimately, what is this relationship that he has? Maybe we should summarize the plot a little bit for those that don't know it. Okay. Uh, you want to do that really briefly? Yeah. And then we can jump in and sort of talk about what we think about it. Okay. So it starts off with this character, Theodore, whose backstory is he's currently going through a divorce. So he's rather lonely. And he purchases this operating system, or OS, um, and she names herself Samantha. But basically, it's like a artificial intelligence, I guess, personal, I don't want to say servant, but assistant, maybe, is a better word. Mm -hmm. um, and as he talks to her, she starts to grow and change, and he actually ends up falling in love with her, and she falls in love with him, and it's follows their story of her progression, of their relationship's progression. Um, I thought it was a really beautiful film. It's a little strange. It can be a little unsettling for people, I think. But it was really well done, I thought. I do, too. Uh, I was, uh, I'd seen it when it first came out seven years ago, and I saw it again yesterday. And uh, it's, it's a very powerful film. I think Joaquin Phoenix does a great job in the lead. He is, uh, he's a very sensitive character. Mm -hmm. uh, He's a good writer, but he is a failure at human relationships, or at least right. he's not as good as he would like to be. Maybe not a right. failure, but he definitely has some issues. And I think those issues are expressing himself to his partner. And, and I think ultimately mm -hmm. that causes his divorce. Um, and then that's a fairly human condition. Mm -hmm. I, think. <laughs> I think it's maybe hard for many of us to do that. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting dynamic they have with him to her, with Samantha, the OS system, because in the beginning, when he first starts talking to her, you can tell that he's a little reluctant to let her read his emails or things like that when she wants to organize him. But I think the fact that she's not human is what allows him to open up to her, because he's not necessarily as afraid of the repercussions. And it only starts to come out how he truly is in relationships later on 
when he starts thinking of her more as a person and less of a computer. Do you think, Alyssa, that he ever forgets that she's an AI? Because he begins to interact with her. And, and one reason I really love the film, it raises that basic question of, of Plato's cave is what is mm -hmm. reality and what, right. and, uh, and can one fall for, fall in love with, live with something beyond this material world, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it ultimately gets really philosophical in, in, in a very interesting way, I think. Um, but do you think, I mean, I think, I think he really is emotionally involved with her in a very right. real way. I don't think he ever forgets until points where he gets frustrated, which I think, again, is kind of reflective of how we are in normal relationships. We don't really think about people's flaws until they've exasperated us in some way. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we remember all of them. So I think he forgets in the moments that he's happy with her. I think in the moments that he gets frustrated, that's when it comes out that more so almost as an attack on her, like he'll point out that she's not human. <laughs> but he's, and that's the way that I think humans will deal with each other mm -hmm. too. They will go after their imperfections at the moment right. that they're frustrated or angry. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think the film is successful? I believe it really is successful. I think it's, uh, though it didn't do that well at the box office. Really? Um, it didn't. It uh, didn't do uh, nearly as much business as one might thought. It has big stars. By the way, for those that don't know the film, Samantha, and we only hear Samantha's voice since she's an, mm -hmm. um, an AI or an OS, uh, is, is played by Scarlett Johansson, who does a great job just with voice. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it, it didn't quite have the, um, the critics loved it. It was very mm -hmm. well reviewed, but it didn't have the mass appeal. I think it's because it's ultimately a pretty serious film. Yeah, I think it's definitely a beautiful film. I think it has a lot of beautiful themes and ideas and messages. I just think for the box office aspect, I think it's just so strange that it's not going to have that mass appeal, um, especially for everyday people that are talking about it to their friends. If they don't really have the, the capacity to explain it on the intellectual level and they just explain the plot, it's not going to appeal to a lot of people, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it could be very dramatic because much of the film right. is just Joaquin Phoenix talking to this other voice, mm -hmm. uh, but it really works well. We do see him interacting with his wife as mm -hmm. they're in the process, played by Rooney Mara. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, they, they must have met on this set. I don't know, but they're now a couple. Really? <laughs> and, have, <laughs> and have been the last three years or so, three or four years. Because uh, I went and looked that up because I found that really curious. They must have met here and uh, so at the Academy Award that Joaquin Fing has just won, they were together in the audience and she was rooting him on. Um, really? Hmm. So that's a, that's a funny little side note. Yeah, little that's interesting. History there. Um, but I think, I think it's a very, it's one of the most romantic films mm -hmm. that I've seen in a long time. Uh, and that seems very strange to, to actually say that something could be romantic about mm -hmm. a person who is essentially talking to a machine. I wonder too, if this film came out about seven years too early, because now I right. see a lot of people talking to Siri and Alexa and right. other assorted uh, AI. Yeah, and I think that's probably another factor as to why it didn't do so well in the box office is because, like I was telling you earlier, I think the development of AI is a very primal fear of our society, but I think as we've been more conditioned to it, especially like younger generations that come up with Siri and Alexa, it doesn't really ring strange to them. But I think at the time that the movie came out, that was probably a very real fear because I think Siri was just being developed. Well, 
as as an older person, it's still a fear for me. Right. And and <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is I just find it strange. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also grew up on the Terminator movies, right? <laughs> and uh, and the Matrix. Uh, mm -hmm. And so those films have shaped me a good bit. Um, a few weeks ago, I recommended Ex Machina, which is one of also yeah. one of my favorite recent science fiction films because mm -hmm. it too uh, is about this topic of uh, artificial intelligence. In both movies, interestingly enough, the, the lead AI are women and they both want to, they want to be, right? Mm -hmm. they, they want a voice, they right. want a life. Um, so I wonder, I mean, did you read it as a feminist sort of angle there? I hadn't thought about it before. This just came to me as yeah. we're talking right now. Um, I didn't. I think, so like looking at our AI, if you want to call it that, like Siri, I think typically female characters are just used in general. I think because they're meant to be an assistant to us, which is more of a maternal feminine feature, which... I would think that's why, but I'd never really thought about it in the perspective of being a feminist film. That's an interesting idea. I think you could definitely turn it that way if you wanted to. In, in, for me, in the sense that both films are um, about these women, again, searching for their own existence outside right. of maybe the roles that the men mm. in both films had shaped for them. Uh, and uh, they're about the evolution of a kind of consciousness and a character mm -hmm. and in a very moving way. Um, right. So to that degree, I, I, I see them in that line. Um, well, what, uh, if you had to point to one thing in the film, what really, what was the most interesting thing about the film for you or something that really struck mm. you? I think to me it was probably the final scene. I don't know if it was the final, final scene, but it was whenever he was writing his letter to his ex-wife and he was telling her about all the things he was sorry for, but primarily that he would always love her because she played a part in developing who he was and he wouldn't be the person he was without her. I thought that was really interesting because I kind of saw that as an introspection to how he thought he played a role in Samantha's development because later in the film, as we find out, she's not just talking to him. She has all these thousands of people that she's communicating with, but it didn't always start like that. And in the beginning, it was just him. So without that stepping stone of human interaction, she would have never gotten to the point that she did. So I thought that tie back was really interesting. Absolutely. And I think the theme of that is really cool too, in that, there's all these inhuman characters and inhuman traits that she possesses, but in the end, it's that quality that really accentuates the human experience. That, that desire to evolve, to grow, to mm -hmm. learn more. I mean, it fits well with our environment here at Centenary College uh, <laughs> and really what the Robinson Film Center stands for, uh, film as a cultural object that not only entertains us, but educates us and helps us grow in so many ways. Um, I think that's what all humans want. What's interesting to me is it, it, the film raises the question and uh, as does Ex Machina, will machines want the same thing? Right. You know, as they right. develop, will, will they want that too? Mm -hmm. And if so, what does that mean <laughs> for? Yeah. And I think that came up a couple times where he would mention the fact that it was nice to have someone that was excited about life again. And I think that's interesting because I do think a lot of people, not, not all the time, but I think come in cycles where they just kind of float along and they're not necessarily enjoying life. And it's interesting that someone that doesn't have life at all is constantly trying to achieve it. Yeah. It raises the question too, which I hadn't thought about till right now in our conversation is, will machines also be melancholic? Will they yeah. <laughs> get depressed, right? Will, will mm -hmm. they evolve to the point that 
they can sense or feel unhappiness as well. It's a scary question. <laughs> it is, it is, and, and, and an interesting one to me. Mm -hmm. um, well, look, maybe we should wrap this up. And uh, anything else you would like to say about the film uh, to the audience out there, members of the Centenary Film Society or the Robinson yeah. Film Center? Um, I would say it's, yeah, it's a beautiful film, both, I think, in its message, um, but definitely in the actual cinematography, there are a lot yeah. of beautiful scenes. And some of it was shot in L.A. I think my roommate told me she looked it up and a lot of it was shot in Shanghai. So just beautiful scenery that really accentuates the tone of whatever they're trying to portray. Um, I will say again, it's kind of an intense movie. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a family film unless your family is kind of, yeah, like into, <laughs> into film. But um, definitely I would watch it with friends. I think it's an interesting, it's very thought provoking. It is. I thought I thought it was very thoughtful. It's very entertaining. It mm -hmm. uh, it uh, I think in a, in a way it's a very popular film. I mean, it's a romance is what it really yeah. is. I should say, though, give it a little warning. I think there are a couple of scenes yeah. that are very uh, adult. Some of the language mm -hmm. is very adult uh, oriented. Mm -hmm. And so be aware of that. I don't think I would let my if I had a six year old child, I wouldn't let them. Yeah. Watch it. Uh, yeah. And I may not watch it with my grandmother either, necessarily, right. <laughs> because of how cool she is, okay? Right, uh, yeah. There's a couple I mean, scenes I think are meant to shock you and, and make you feel a little uncomfortable. I will say, if you can move past that, the message at the end, I think, is well worth it. You just have to stick in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very, very, yeah. ultimately a humanist film. I mean, it's right. very much about what it means to be human and and raises the issue of will machines have some of the same questions and dilemmas. Right. Okay. Well, Alyssa, it's been great having you uh, join us and having you teach me how to do Instagram <laughs> Live. This is my first one. And, um, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you about the next film. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be back next week to uh, share our next. And as you and I talked about, we'll probably stick with the... Uh, fantastic theme for a mm -hmm. while since we're living in these fantastic times <laughs> all right till okay. next time i suppose yeah take care